Again, I wish you a happy Easter. Welcome you to Woodmont. Uh, also welcome those who are downstairs in Gerota Hall worshiping at the bridge service. We usually have the bridge on Sunday nights, but it's at 930 this morning. And so we say a special welcome uh, to them as well. Um, this morning we had a beautiful sunrise service at 7 o'clock, a service that keeps growing. I think there were close to 100 people there, uh, literally, not preacher count, about 100 people there. <laughs> But it occurred to me, what, you know, why does this service keep growing? And um, I said, you know, we don't pass the offering plate at the sunrise service. Maybe that's why it keeps growing, but it was uh, beautiful. And today is a glorious Easter day. Please join me for a word of prayer this morning. Loving God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts on this Easter Sunday be acceptable in your sight. You are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. There was once a, a very pious, proper Presbyterian woman by the name of Polly. And Polly had a pet parrot. And this was a wonderful parrot, a nicer parrot you will never meet. This bird was pious and proper and well-behaved. But this parrot had a bad habit. Whenever Polly would have people over to her house for a Bible study or for a small group of sorts, the parrot would always act up and blurt out, Whoopee, Charlie, let the good times roll. And Polly was just humiliated. She tried all kinds of things to get the parrot to behave. She tried positive reinforcement and negative reinforcement. She tried electroshock therapy. She tried sticking the parrot in the freezer when it would behave. But still, the parrot would act out around new people. Well, one day the Presbyterian pastor came to visit Polly. And wouldn't you know it, as soon as he walked in the room, the parrot blurted out, Whoopee, Charlie, let the good times roll. Well, Polly was embarrassed again. But her pastor said, you know what? I have the solution to this. You see, I too have parrots, two of them in fact, one named Peter, the other named Paul. They sit in my study, they are well behaved, they stay reverent, and they pray all day. So why don't we take your unruly parrot over to my house and let her be around Peter and Paul, and maybe their good behavior will rub off onto her. So they came up with a plan. They covered the cage with a sheet. They took the bird over to the parsonage, and uh, slowly but surely they pulled the sheet off of the cage. Polly was very nervous. The bird looked over, saw the other two parrots, and blurted out, whoopee, Charlie, let the good times roll. Well, Polly doesn't know what to do. The pastor doesn't know what to do. But about that time, Peter looked over at the other parrot, Paul, and nudged him, and he said, wake up, Paul. Our prayers have finally been answered. <laughs> well, today is Easter Sunday, and today, our prayers have finally been answered. Jesus is alive. He is risen. Death did not win. What is Easter all about? What's it all about? The resurrection is God's eternal yes to the world's temporal no. The resurrection is the power of God's love to take the absolute worst that human beings can do and not let it have the final say. Easter is the world's great history lesson of how God's love turns despair into joy, defeat into victory, and death into new life. And in a world that is as troubled as ours is today, we need to hear that great news. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Now, we do not seek to explain the resurrection, for we really can't do that. People and theologians have been debating exactly what happened that first Easter for centuries now, but we seek only to celebrate it. And even more importantly, we seek to experience it in our own lives. The Bible does not prove the resurrection, but the resurrection proves the truth of the Bible. The church does not seek to prove or explain the resurrection. The resurrection and the continuing power of it gives validity to the church and its mission. 
We are a people of the resurrection. The Christian faith is a religion of the resurrection. The heart of the Christian gospel is found in the words, Christ the Lord is risen, and we are called to know and to experience the risen Lord. Matthew tells us in his account that Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to the tomb very early on that first Easter. Matthew says there was an earthquake rolling back the stone and an angel appeared to them saying, do not be afraid. I know you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here for he has been raised. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go and tell his disciples that he has been raised from the dead and he's going ahead of you to Galilee and there you will see him. And Matthew tells us that the woman ran to tell the disciples and on the way they encountered Jesus. And he said, greetings. And they fell at his feet and worshiped him. Now I realize that there may be some here this morning who still don't buy it. You consider yourself a Christian. You believe in Jesus and his teachings. You want to follow him and to love others the way that Jesus loved. But you're just not so sure about this concept of being raised from the dead. There's something in your rational, post-enlightenment, scientific mind that just won't let you take that leap. All I can say is that we call it faith for a reason. We cannot explain or prove exactly what happened on that first Easter. But we do know that something happened. The forces of death and destruction that put Jesus on the cross did not have the final say. God had the final say. God made things right. Why do we need Easter? Now that's a question worth pondering. That's a question that I'd like to try to answer this morning on this Easter Sunday. We need Easter for many reasons. First of all, we need Easter to remind us that Jesus Christ was who he said he was. The Messiah, the Son of God, the one who willingly gave his life in such a brutally violent way to bring God's love and God's kingdom here to earth. People ask, why did Jesus have to die such a brutally violent death? There were not as many people here on Good Friday as there are this morning. We don't like to think about that. But I said that Jesus' death on a cross and everything that led up to it demonstrates and calls our world out for what it is, which is a very violent place. And everything that does happen and that can happen is not acceptable to God. Christianity would not have lasted over 2,000 years, though, if it were based on a lie. If Jesus' death had been the end, he would have been regarded in history as a great teacher, a great rabbi, a prophet, a, a healer, as somebody who was not afraid to challenge the domination system and to speak up for the poor and the outcasts and the downtrodden. But there is no way that the faith would have spread the way it did and lasted as long as it has without the resurrection. Because if you think about it, we have done everything in our power to try to kill the church, and yet the message lives on. The Apostle Paul, the one who spent his early years persecuting the church and persecuting Christians, met the risen Christ on the road to Damascus, and it absolutely changed his life. He became the greatest advocate for Christianity that perhaps we've ever known. And to the Corinthian church, he writes, if there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ has not been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, 
then our proclamation has been in vain and your faith has been in vain. He goes on to say, if it is for this life only that we have hoped in Christ, then we are of all people most to be pitied. Easter proves to us that Jesus was who he said he was. And we can and we should take his word seriously, including the Great Commission that we find at the end of Matthew's Gospel where Jesus says, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go and make disciples of all nations. How are we doing with that? Secondly, we need Easter to remind us that there is life after death. Death to this world as sad as it is, is not the end. Again, Paul says, if it is for this life only that we have hoped in Christ, we are of all people to be most pitied. Heaven is a mystery to us. We are still left wondering what heaven is like. Do we go there as soon as we die? Will we recognize other people? Will we still be married in heaven? Will we be reunited with our loved ones that we have lost? Will we be aware of what's happening here on earth? All of us ask and wonder about these questions and the answers that we come up with greatly affect the way that we look at death. But remember, until we are free to die, we are not free to live. Remember the words of Jesus. I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, even though they die, will live. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. Paul writes, eye has not seen nor ear has heard. Neither has it entered the mind of man the glory that God has prepared for those who love him. And then he says to the Romans, I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. We will not know what heaven is like until we get there. But we do know that heaven is real. And we know that life goes on beyond the grave, as mysterious as that is. And lastly, today, we need Easter to remind us that there are no hopeless situations in this world. No matter what might happen to us on this side of death, we can always get through it. We live in a parsonage right here behind the church. No parents at that parsonage, just children. (laughs) But on Wednesday afternoon of this past week, the entire plaster ceiling of our dining room completely collapsed, crushing the furniture, breaking glass, destroying the chandelier, making a huge mess. Fortunately, nobody was hurt. The kids were in another room. Now, Holy Week is the busiest time of the year for a minister. (laughs) It's the most stressful time of the year. I did not need for that to happen on Wednesday afternoon. We had to go stay with friends. They had to come and test for asbestos before they could remove the debris and come clean it up. Beverly Honeycutt, one of our long-tenured custodians at this church, came walking over Wednesday afternoon with a broom and a dustpan. And I said, Beverly, this is a much bigger job than that. (laughs) And then Beverly became a theologian when she said, well, well, maybe the devil don't want you to preach that Easter message on Sunday. (laughs) I hadn't thought of it that way, but she reminded me of that. Maybe she was right. The truth is, all of us have times in our lives when we feel like our worlds are crashing in on us. And it seems to happen at times when we already feel overwhelmed, already stressed out, already at the end of our rope. We go through times of divorce, times of despair, 
times of depression, times of illness, times of cancer, times of grief, times of unemployment, times of financial strain, times of betrayal, times of miscarriage, times of confusion, times of addiction, times of sadness, times of loneliness. But there is nothing in this world that cannot be overcome with faith. Because with faith, there is always hope. And when you lose faith and you lose hope, then you lose everything. Easter reminds us that there is hope and resurrection on this side of death as well. There are still many people who simply view their Christian faith as a ticket for going to heaven one day when they die. And that's all. And so they never truly live life in this world to the fullest. But the resurrecting power of God means that we don't have to settle for anything less than fullness of life in this world right now, at this very moment. Salvation can begin in this world when we come to know Christ, and then it's completed on the other side of death. I get to see this happen often. As a minister, I get to see marriages that were broken get healed and restored. I get to see cancer that's spread get defeated, depression that's been devastating gets treated and it starts to subside. Alcoholics quit drinking. Those who have lost all hope somehow find hope again in their life. Friendships get renewed. Forgiveness gets granted. The resurrection not only assures us that life goes on after death, it's a great reminder that life goes on before death no matter what might happen to us. And frankly, we need more out of our faith than to just sit around and wait for heaven one day. Heaven will be great, but we're not there yet. What does the great philosopher Kenny Chesney say in his song? Everybody wants to go to heaven. Beats the other place, there ain't no doubt. Everybody wants to go to heaven, but nobody wants to go now. We need fullness of life here on earth. What do we pray in the Lord's Prayer every week when we worship? Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. There's a lot to be done here. There's a lot to be done in our own hearts. Jesus came to show us that and to challenge us to do that. Presbyterian minister and author Frederick Buechner was once asked that question that many Christians like to ask, have you been born again? And he responded to that by saying, let me tell you something. I have been born again and again and again. That's what faith is all about. May it be so with us as we journey through life. May we all be born again and again this Easter Don't leave here this morning the same. Please join me in prayer. God, give us eyes to see the beauty of the spring and to behold your majesty in every living thing. And may we see in lacy leaves and every budding flower the hand that rules the universe with gentleness and with power. And may this Easter grandeur that spring lavishly imparts Awaken faded flowers of faith lying dormant in our hearts and give us ears to hear, dear God, the springtime songs of birds with messages more meaningful than our often empty words, telling worried human beings who are lost in dark despair, be like us and do not worry, for you, God, have us. Amen.